Hello everybody, and welcome back in the shop. Today we have this little fella here. This thing is a pencil holder. What? I just like keeping my bulbs in there sometimes. This thing here is obviously a light. And it comes from a quite old and very interesting machine that ties knots on strings in a fabric slash embroidery making factory nearby. And I know, a whole machine to tie knots sounds funny when you first hear it. But trust me, it is a very serious machine tying a very serious shitload of knots. I mean, it may be tying knots for 3 days straight. So this machine also carries a light which for some reason goes through too many bulbs way too often. It keeps frying those little bulbs. And guess who is asked to solve this problem? Yes. You and me. Come on, don't be a lazy son of a bitch. At this point I have to make two observations about this thing. First of all it runs on 45 volts AC through this plug here. And secondly, the Germans made this before inventing Torx head screws and allens and Torx with also a little bump in the middle and little Eastern bunny shaped screw heads and so on. This is back when you could fix almost everything if you had just one flat head screwdriver and a hammer. So this runs on 45 volts AC which stands for alternating current just like the one that runs in your watch circuits. Not to be confused with alternative current which usually dresses funny and listens to some really odd music. And it uses two of those 24 volt rated bulbs connected in series. So we have 24 and 24 making us 48. We slightly underpower it giving it 45 and everything should be golden. Appears it's not. And since we are messing up with this and it's now 2019 and all that cool stuff you know. We are gonna convert it to LED. There, convert it. Thanks for watching. Ah, it's not that simple. LED lights are more efficient, consuming a heck of a lot less of power for the same amount of brightness, and they usually live longer. Much longer. So we have some good reasons to use them, but we also have a problem. They run on DC, direct current. Like the one you have inside a battery, let's say. So we have to convert the alternating current provided through this cord to direct to power our LEDs with. And there's nothing new to that. You can use a process called rectification using some diodes and a capacitor and get it done. But have a look at that. When rectifying AC into DC, the output DC voltage is by 1.41 times greater than the input AC. Roughly. So that means that rectifying 45 AC will get us around 63 volts DC which are gonna be slightly less than that, cause there will be some voltage drop in the diodes and all, but let's call it 63. Those LED bulbs here are rated at 12V each, so if we connect them in series on our new 63V DC power supply, we're gonna need 525 of them in order to work properly. And if you think about the diode voltage drop we talked about, and the fact that those bulbs are intended for vehicles, where the power supply is not always dead on 12 volts, I believe we'll be okay using just 5 of them. So just like that we now know that we need to squeeze 5 of those bulbs down there. But they don't exactly fit. So let's do something about that. Sailing me, give me a prescription and make my heart 
So we have just made the spacer that will hold our new lights panel 35mm apart from this casting's bottom. This way with this thing being tapered we can make the panel a bit bigger and squeeze all 5 lamps up there. And it also leaves us plenty of room to the back to wire our rectifier and capacitor xenon. The initial thought was to use two spacers but I decided I should skip one so that I can also mount a bulb here in the middle. One should be more than enough. So let's get going. There's a feeling rising up through my bones, my bones, my bones. So we got it to size and I also got rid of the copper layer it had on one side. As we said we are gonna connect the LEDs in series so we don't wanna sort them. Now you may know that I am not a safety freak but this PCB material FR4 you don't wanna breathe it. Trust me it is nasty stuff. Well I am not very famous for my soldering skills, but this will get the job done for sure. Now let's say that back here we have our 60 volt power supply, with this being the positive lead, red wire, and this being the negative lead, black wire. So with the positive lead you enter to the first LED's positive pin, and then you exit from the negative pin of the same LED with a wire to enter the second LED's positive pin, and so on, until you are left with a wire coming out of the negative pin of the last LED, which goes back to your power supply. And this is a connection in series, where you literally butt join your LEDs, where it's more like this way. So all we have to do now is add the switch someplace here and make our rectifier. Let's start with the switch. a feeling rising up through my bones, my bones, my bones, my bones, yeah, 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 my bones, my bones, my Shows in the light of 
and there you have it. It is considered finished. But there is also a problem with this thing. I don't have a way of testing it. The thing is that I don't have a way of producing 45 volts AC or even 60 volts DC. And I could make a battery array or wind a transformer myself, but honestly, it is a lot of work just to test this thing here. I don't have many uses for a 45 volts AC power supply besides this one here. So we'll have to trust the theory and wait for the time it gets installed, I guess. Until then, I can light up one of those LEDs for you to get an idea of how bright they are. Well, they are pretty bright. In fact, this thing is gonna be much brighter than before and much cooler to the touch also. This used to get pretty hot to the point that you couldn't even touch it. So that was all regarding this little project. It was not rocket science for sure, but the fact that it is running on a funny power supply made it interesting for me. I hope you found it interesting yourself. I mean, come on, 45 AC. But now I think I owe you some updates. First of all, I have to say this one. Most of the music I've ever used on these videos I'm making comes from one guy. The same guy. I am not affiliated with this guy, neither I know him in person or what. I just really like his tunes. And I really appreciate the fact that he is just handing them out for people to listen to or use to make something like my case or whatever. His name is Kala and he releases a new album every year on 27th April, I believe, which is also his birthday. So this is tomorrow for me. For you it is probably already past. So if you dig into the tunes you usually listen to here, make sure to pay him a visit and check out his new stuff. Show him some love. Kala, if you are watching, thanks buddy. Thanks for all. And now we come into the next thing, which is Patreon. And there is no easy way to put this, so I will shoot straight ahead. I'm thinking of discontinuing my Patreon account. And here is how it goes. First of all, I'm very grateful to each and every one of you guys that pledged there over the times. Being here and making videos is very time consuming, and sometimes it is also expensive. So I really appreciate the fact that you wanted to chip in and make it a bit easier. But even more than your dollar, I appreciate the fact that you had nothing to get out of this. I mean that I'd probably make these videos either way, and I also stated that in there quite clearly, but you pledged either way. And this is appreciation. And it's above dollars. Now to the thing that bugs me about it. It is a monthly thing. I do get that people wanna help, wanna show some love, some gratitude, if I'm even using the right word here, and all. I've also done that myself. Thing is that I don't want to be in anyone's bills, a monthly expense. I just don't feel right about it. And to be honest, I never used Python right. There are not different awards for different pledges, there are not prizes and stuff in my page. So maybe it is not for me. Or not yet at least. So that's why I'm thinking of replacing it with a good old PayPal button. A one-time thing. You have a spare dollar and you feel like you wanna help this place get mightier. Boom. You press this button and you are done. You are not gonna have to pay the psycho Greek guy every month, like I am selling you internet or something. Besides that, I have also thoughts on starting a small retail business to help fund future projects. You could buy from me an Arduino or something, and this way you'd get it much sooner, and I would also make a buck. But none of those changes will be done by the time you watch this one. In fact, I will be out of town for a week, so I will get to them once I'm back. And of course, I will let you know. If you have any objections or suggestions, I'd love to hear them down below. Until next time, you all have a nice one.